Hi guys. Okay, in this lesson, we are going to look at De, Mor De Morve's theorem. I always struggle to say that name. So De Morve's theorem is this. Um, if you have a complex number raised to a power of n, then um, it equals or to the n times cos of n theta. So you multiply the theta by the n plus i times sine uh, of n theta. I have a little bit of a, I've always had a bit of an issue with De Morve's theorem because it's it's it gets it gets this f big name and it's a big it's a big thing in mathematics everyone knows de morve's theorem but the truth is once you know once you know euler's form like this like if, if you know a, a complex number 2 e to the i times theta like pi over 3 then we know that if i want to raise this to the power of by the way, I wanted this to be to the power of five. If I wanted to raise this to the power of five, then we know that it's just two to the power of five times e to the i times five pi over three because of the rules of indices. So you can actually prove De Morve's theorem pretty easily using Euler. However, it's from what I can gather, De Morve came up with this before Euler did his thing with his identity and all this stuff. So we use De Morve's theorem and we need to know how to prove it by induction. Now I, I will do that in the proof by induction section. So you need to be able to prove it for n is a positive integer. So here is a complex number to the power of n. You need to know how to prove it uh, using induction for n is an element of the positive integers. But note, and again, this is this is also a little bit, um, this isn't as clear as I'm going to make it sound, but for the purposes of everything you need to know in the IB, this is this holds for um, rational numbers. So n can be any rational number. And here I'm going to I'm going to um, show you how to use it for well, to the power of a half because it's square root. Okay, so how do I how do I write this in Cartesian form? So the first thing we need to do is write it in modulus argument form. So again, hopefully now you see I, when I taught you how to do this, I said this comes up all the time. So hopefully you're getting good at it. So one plus root three, uh, one plus root three. There. Uh, this is one. This is root three. This is theta. This length here has to be two because this squared plus this squared equals this this squared. And the angle. So, well, let me let me write here. Or is equal to the square root. Well, it's two. Pythagoras the theorem. And then tan of theta is root three. So theta is pi over pi over three. So now this thing, this one plus uh, root three i to the power of five is equal to um, two cis theta. Let's let's go with this. It's two. Um, well, hang on. It's, it's it's this first. It's two times cos. So all, leave the we're going to leave the five outside. So it's I'm writing this in modulus argument form. So it's two cos of pi over three plus i times sine of pi over three. But this to the power of five means it's this all to the power of five. So I get my two to the power of five, and then this to the power of five becomes, and this is De Morve's theorem, I multiply by the 5 here. So it's 2 to the power of 5 times cos, so I multiply the theta by 5. Cos 5 pi over theta plus i times sine of 5 pi. Sorry, did I say theta? I meant over 3. There. So that's De Morve's theorem to set it up like this. Now, obviously, he said write it in Cartesian form. So I need to now go backwards. So imagine, look, I could have used the, the binomial expansion there and multiplied it out. 
but this is a much quicker way especially if this was much bigger than five imagine if this was 25 then the last thing you want to be doing is the binomial expansion this actually works out quite nicely so um i just need to now find the well 2 to the power 5 is 32 cos of 5 pi over 3 so 5 pi over 3 would be down here so it would actually be um, and take your time trying to figure this out if, if you want but it would be down here and, it, and the cos would be 1 over 2 and it's because it's down here it's positive so uh, this would actually be 1 over 2 plus i times psi now actually it's going to be it is going to be negative but let's let's do that in a second so it's plus i times sine of 5 pi over 3 is actually negative root 3 over 2 so i'm left with 32 times a half is 16 16 minus 16 minus uh, 16 minus 16 root 3 i and um okay yeah that's it 16 minus 6 16 minus 16 root 3i that is this written in cartesian form okay um next one this so the only kind of difference with this is well that the exponent is a rational number it's going to be a half and i've just written it in as a square root so this this is actually equal to this equals so the square root of negative 2 plus 2i equals negative 2 plus 2i to the power of a half and this equals we're going to write this well let's do this down here we, we want to write this in modulus argument form so minus 2 plus 2i is actually up here this is 2 this is 2 so this is going to be this squared plus this squared root 8 this is going to be root 8 this is going to be alpha this is going to be theta so or equals root 8 tan alpha equals 2 over 2 which is 1 alpha equals pi over 4 then theta has to equal pi minus pi over 4 which is 3 pi over 4. So this thing here, minus 2 plus 2i to the power of a half, equals, same thing, we're going to do this, we're going to write this in modulus argument form, which is root 8, root 8 times, and this time I'm just going to say cis, cis uh, theta is 3 pi over 4, all to the power of a half okay so this gives me root 8 to the power of a half which is actually 8 to the power of a half to the power of a half 8 to the power of a half to the power of a half which is actually 8 to the power of a quarter and then it's going to be cis cis 3 pi over 4 times a half which is 3 pi over 8 um this is then the 8 to the power of a quarter, 8 to the power of a quarter times cis 3 pi over 8. Now look, he didn't actually say, he did, this, this, this time he said write it in, find this in Cartesian form, so I had to put it in Cartesian form. This time he just said find this, so there, that's it. That's the, that's the square root of this. I've written it in cis form. Fair enough. So that's... Um, that's De Morf's theorem. In the next lesson, you're going to see that this is, well, it's very useful when it comes to solving um, or, or finding roots of complex equations. So that's what we're going to do in the next lesson. So I'll see you then.